what you see here, look at the table in the middle, is a um, kind of machine learning problem. Here is a line that describes the weather. Consider yourself, you are crazy about serving, you're maximum excited to, to go down to the beach and each morning you have to decide whether to do this or not. And then you take a look at the sky, you, you feel the temperature, you look at the humidity, is the wind strong, the water warm, you are thinking about this. And what will be the forecast? Well, how will the weather, de the weather develop over the day? And if all things fit to your mind, then you say, yes, I will do it. And um, there are, of course, situations when you won't do this, for instance, when the sky is rainy. And if you look at these tables, there are a few examples when, when you check the weather and they show your decisions in the past. If you keen eye on this, you would say, okay, if it's rainy, I'm enjoying my sport, or I won't go down to the server, I'll stay at home. And if it's sunny, I will do this. And if you analyze the sky only, you see that um, from, from this information, rainy, you get the enjoy sports no. And then from, this, from the other information, sunny, you get the enjoy sports yes. We call a subset of these examples you are interested in. Martin called it classes minus one or plus one, plus one, or called it I. Uh, if you the, the credit or not, we call this a concept. And the question is, the concept here is you go to do your serve. The concept is here to enjoy sport. And the question is how to capture this concept. And again, I, I told you already, simply by looking at sky, you capture the, the concept because you say, if the sky is sunny, I'll do my sports. However, you can think about other examples of uh, this table, which uh, will have a sunny sky, but no wind, and you don't go south again. It means the sky in the long term will not be enough. And uh, the idea what you have to do is to find a combination of, and of these features that helps you to explain, to decide when to do your sports. And this is called concept learning because we learn the concept when to enjoy sport. Martin showed you how to learn the concept when to get a credit. The difference to the example of, my, uh, of Martin is um, Martin's input space or feature space could be sorted. You see this. The, the x value here is going from small values to high values. The x2 value is going from small values to high values. We have an inner structure in the feature space. Actually, this is a dot product space, or for the mathematicians, it's a pre Hilbert space, and you can do something with this. Here we have only these nominal variables, and uh, we cannot compute temperature times weight plus humidity times some weight. This is all nonsense. However, this is a situation here and uh, we, uh, you will learn two things here, namely that we don't have always such a nice dot product space. This is the first thing. And the second thing is we can develop different complex ideas to describe what we are doing here to analyze our features. And these different complex things, this introduce bias. Um, here's a slide that shows you um, what are possible values for our features. For instance, the sky can be sunny, rainy, or cloudy. That means all feature combinations altogether is three times two times two times two times two times two. This is 96. That means you can distinguish altogether 96 different vectors. Recall this graphic here that you have seen in our first reading. The objects, this is a real world, something from the real world, 
is abstracted into a set of features. The object here is a true weather. And um, describing the true, the true weather is this few variables is, is very superficial and very brute force and uh, coarse. However, it is possible to do this. And this description, this simplification, this is called model formation, and this is done here. After this, we work only on the feature space. You see, presenting the table that we started here. But um, if you are solving a machine learning problem for somebody else, you're getting objects, and you have to think about how to get from here to here. This is explained here in the definition. Again, a concept is formed by selecting a subset of these objects. And uh, we say, if you belong to this, to this subject, you're part of the concept. If you belong to the, I want to do my surfing, you are part of the concept, do sports also. We now have to think about hypotheses to solve the learning task. And one hypothesis was, if the sky is rainy, I don't do sports. If the sky is sunny, I do sports. And others of you might think about other hypotheses. For instance, if the temperature is warm, I do sports. And if the temperature is cold, I don't do sports. And here the question quickly arises, which hypothesis is better? The more specific or the more abstract or broad one? Distinguish two things. Sorry. An example fulfills a hypothesis. If we take the example and check whether it produces the class one or the proposition you belong to the concept. An example is consistent if the hypothesis produces the same like our example set. I will bring you an example soon, no worries. I suggest, I propose that our hypothesis has the following form. There are such a kind of regular expression vector. It's not in fact a true regular expression. It is a vector that has literals and uh, question marks. And uh, this is read as follows. I have it here presented on the left hand side. Consider this hypothesis. It says, I ask for sky for the literal sunny. I ask for temperature everything, I'm happy with everything with the white card. The same with humidity, I accept any value for humidity, but for wind, I want to have strong. The water is not interesting for me, I accept any value, and the forecast is same. Every line from here that in that sense fulfills this hypothesis, belongs to our concept. Concept learning now is to find such a nice description, such a rule. And if you want to map this to the regression situation, in the regression situation, concept learning was to find the correct weights. Here, concept learning means to find a description of this form. And here you see something important from machine learning. You have many different means to do a decision. It can be completely modeled in the algebraic sense on a dot product space. It can be completely done symbolically like here. But what happens is always the same. You have to search for such a hypothesis like Martin search for the weight vector, we have to search for this description. 
And this description gives us a means to say yes or no, plus or minus. I don't go too much further now, but um, I explain how we search. This uh, will then conclude this uh, reading for today. First, let me say there are hypotheses which never work. These uh, hypotheses which accepts no value, this is expressed by this perpendicular sign, um, this uh, can never be fulfilled. And there are processes which always work, regardless of the weather I go. This is a, the S0 is the most specific hypothesis, the G0 is the most general hypothesis. And um, specificity means to introduce bias, and generality means to reduce bias. And bias is here something which is meant in the neutral sense. We do not think of bias as something negative. We do of, we think of bias as assumptions. How specific are we allowed to go? What you see here on, on this slide are two things. The feature space X, this is more or less our table here. Each point here is a description of the weather. And what you see on the right hand side is an organization in a so called Hasse diagram or something similar like this, where we arrange the hypothesis from very specific to very general. For instance, if you take this hypothesis here, then you can look, this hypothesis is called H1, this is here. Then you can look which elements from the feature space are now allowed if I accept this hypothesis. And this gives us these two elements. The hypothesis H4, you see this is more general. It allows more elements. In fact, we would say H1 has a higher bias. It's more specific. And you see also from this, that this is not always clear inclusion situation. You see here's a hypothesis, namely H2, which intersects with this hypothesis H1, but not completely. That means we have only a half order here. We can, and this also means that the search is not so easily done. To be honest, this half order shows us that we in fact have to look at each of these hypotheses to find the optimum one. This is a normal problem in machine learning. We do not have the time or the possibility to quickly find the optimum hypothesis. I know. Sorry, when I wanted to show you something. Yeah, this is here. If there's something we want you to learn, then this is this here. Machine learning means to find a hypothesis that is consistent with your observations. And machine learning methods are means to systematically search among the possible hypotheses. You as a designer and a big applier of machine learning, you have to decide of which form the hypothesis should, the hypothesis space should be. And then you have to explain or to design how to search this space. And here, now you understand what I meant with explainability in the beginning. If somebody asks me, can you now explain these decisions? Yes, I can say in the regression, I look at the error and I can see that this error exactly explains what I'm doing. And I can explain also my decisions by saying, I have considered only linear functions. And can, I can explain my decisions by saying, these linear functions capture 90% of the cases they have a small bias. And uh, I can explain something about their performance and I, I can compute this. If the public is talking about explainable AI, 
they are thinking about some witchcraft, which now comes with an explanation. But you will see, all explanations will boil down to these four things which I've mentioned. The error, the kind of hypothesis, the hypothesis is based and how you search. Okay, I think for what um, now we are nearly done, we have an algorithm here, the so-called find S algorithm, which starts with the maximally specific hypothesis and then takes the examples and then changes the hypothesis. This is a search algorithm for the machine learning and then changes the hypothesis if an example does not fit. Like the LMS algorithm corrected the error by adapting the weights, the find S algorithm corrects the error by changing the question marks in the hypothesis. We might start here from the very specific one and get examples which are not fulfilled by this hypothesis and then ask ourselves how to simplify, how to relax this hypothesis so that the example x1 fits. We're doing this by introducing these literals here. And when the next example is coming here, we see the next example x2 does not fit with hypothesis h1. And again, we relax hypothesis h1, we introduce here a question mark, and then all of a sudden, both examples are accepted. What I demonstrate here, what is encoded here, is a learning algorithm. I think for today, this is enough. The details are quite well explained on the slides. And uh, to recap what you have learned now in the second part here with me is, you have seen a very different feature space. All of them are symbols. You have seen a very different kind of search, namely simply changing somehow the literals in a hypothesis. And you have seen that being more specific means to exclude certain things and hence to introduce some kind of pre-knowledge, some kind of tendency, which is usually called bias. What we do next in the next reading is to elaborate more on this bias concept to show you what happens if the search space brings you to hypothesis which cannot explain everything because the data set is inconsistent due to label noise and we will introduce you how to evaluate the performance the quality the accuracy or the error of your algorithms. The evaluation measures that we introduce will fit to every kind of learning problem. They are independent of the representation of the data set and of the feature space. Okay, that's all I wanted to tell you today for concept learning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being so concentrated for listening to us. I know this sometimes one cannot follow because if you have not read this before, um, this, the things happen too quickly. And, and I appreciate that you try to understand this, what we are doing. Here. And we're trying to do two things. We try to, to bring you the gist, the idea, the basic idea, how does machine learning happen? And then we, Martin showed you the separating line, where does it come from? Or bias, where does it come from? And on the other side, we also want to be mathematically precise. That you do not only talk superficial about this idea, but you understand and can prove the mathematical concepts. Yeah, thank you. That's all.